Welcome back class. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm not feeling so so hot uh, this this week. Uh, got some kind of head cold. Uh, voice is kind of kind of rough. But uh, I'll do the best I can here through these uh, uh, through these videos. Uh, today we are going to begin part number one of two of our look at our study of uh, Islam or the Muslims. We're going to be looking at the uh, the man Muhammad. And then we'll be looking at some of the beliefs of Islam and also the five pillars of Islam. And that'll be in the second, uh, the second lecture. Uh, but today we are going to be focusing in on uh, the foundings of, of Islam and uh, mainly through the, the highlights or the, the points of uh, Muhammad's life. Uh, so hang on tight. We're going to move into the PowerPoint. Uh, just see you in just a second. Okay, class, we're going to begin our uh, look at Islam. This is part one. We're going to be looking at Muhammad's life uh, here today, giving us the foundation for uh, for Islam. So first off, when you um, hear the word Islam or Muslim, what, what is it that you think of? What comes to your mind? Uh, some people believe that uh, <clears throat> you know, they, they, they think uh, immediately um, Middle East, they think um, the Quran, they think of Muhammad, um, they think of a mosque, uh, praying a certain way. There's different uh, different things or images that come into your mind when you uh, when you think of Islam. So, what I want to try to do today is just kind of give us an understanding or a foundation um, based on the history. Of where Islam um, came from and, and where it is today. Um, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at Muhammad. Obviously, he's the founder of Islam. Um, he was born Abu Hussein uh, in Mecca, uh, which is in Saudi Arabia today. Uh, Mecca. And he was born around 570 A.D., so we're not we're not talking about ancient history here. We are talking about um, uh, we're talking about like early Middle Ages uh, time period. Uh, so the Roman Empire has already become the Holy Roman Empire. The Patristic period uh, in regards to church history has already passed. So we are now uh, basically in the in the early stages of the Middle Ages. 570 AD. So this this is not an ancient uh, an ancient study. Uh, this is this is well after uh, Constantine and the Roman Empire becoming a Christian empire. So Abu Hussein, who is Muhammad, he later changed his name to Muhammad, and Muhammad means the praised one. The praised one. That's important for you to know. The praised one. He was raised by his by his grandfather and his uncle. Uh, who were traitors, T-A-R-T-R-A-D-E-R-S, traitors, meaning they trade goods, uh, traitors, after their, after his, uh, his mom and dad died. So his grandfather and uncle raised him. Well, because they were traitors, they traveled around, and Muhammad was, to, was able to meet Christians. Again, Christianity was not new. Christianity has been... Um, now established, especially in the Holy Roman Empire, established because of Constantine. It is now established uh, um, belief system now, Christianity. So he ran into Christians, and he learned from Christians. In 595 AD, he married, well actually it's her name was Khadijah. Okay, so that little A there in the slide, that's a typo. Uh, it's uh, supposed to be Khadijah. He married her. Her name was Khadijah. And she was 40 years old. She was very wealthy. And because of her wealth, that gave him a bunch of free time on his hands. He had a life of leisure. And one of the things that he did was he would go to a cave and meditate. So he's there meditating in the caves. And in 610 A.D., he has his first revelation, or begins his revelations from Gabriel. And his first revelation dealt with the uselessness of idols, how man must submit to Allah. And Allah 
is is just be, it's it's the word God in Arabic. But we must be very careful with this because Allah means God in Arabic, but Allah does not mean the God of the Bible. Some people believe that the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran are the same God, but they are not. The God of the Bible is a triune Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus Christ, to, uh, to earth, to God incarnate as Christ is born of the Virgin Mary and lived a sinless life and then he went to the cross for you and I dying for our sins and and um, defeating death, rising from the grave and ascending on high. These are some of the, the tenets of the Christian faith and our belief system that we have. What I just explained to you would be completely foreign and even heretical to the, the Muslim. The Muslim would not view Allah in the same way that I just said uh, who God is of the Bible. Therefore, Christians, we also should not view the God of the Bible as the same as the God of the Quran or Allah. In Muslim belief, Allah does not have a son, Jesus Christ. There is not a triune Godhead in the Quran. So Allah is not the same as the God of the Bible, but it does mean God in the Arabic language. So it's the same terminology, but a different definition. So Gabriel uh, gave a revelation of useless idols, submit to Allah, and then thirdly, impending judgment. So after he leaves this cave and he comes out, his wife Khadijah affirms this revelation was from God, from Allah, because Muhammad was having these mood swings and mood changes. And so she said, well, he obviously has met with Allah or, or uh, has met with uh, um, the revelation that came from, from Gabriel, which came from Allah. And then so Khadijah, his wife, affirms it. And then also his uncle, Abu, uh, also affirmed that these revelations came and Abu um, he was actually a uh, quote-unquote Christian priest again Islam was not founded yet we're getting there but Abu was a quote-unquote Christian priest and the reason I say quote-unquote was because uh, he he definitely did not um, believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, he, at best, he minimized the deity of Jesus Christ. So Uncle Abu affirms this, that he's got a, this revelation. In 613 AD, there were only 13 converts, and the leaders of Mecca began, that's where Muhammad is at, where he was from, are concerned about this. this. This man has this like small following, and it is very small, but they wanted to get rid of him anyway so they wanted to kill him but they wouldn't because they believed mecca was a holy city so uh they they didn't they wanted to kill him but they didn't in 619 a.d khadija his wife and uncle abu they actually die and what that starts uh, the reason i have that in there is then over the next couple of years um Muhammad, he, he remarries and has several wives, and he actually remarries 12 times. And a very well-known account that his youngest wife, Aisha, A-I-S-H-A, Aisha, uh, she was six years old when they were married, and uh, the marriage was actually consummated, meaning there were sexual relations uh, when she was nine years old. So you have this man, Muhammad, marrying and consummating a marriage with a nine-year-old. A couple of years later, in 622 AD, uh, July 16th, actually, 622 AD, there was an assassination attempt on Muhammad's life, and so he, he flees to Medina. He flees Mecca, and he flees to Medina, and this is where it is viewed as the birth of Islam, when he fled from Mecca to Medina, Muslims view that as the birth of their religion. In 624, Muhammad and his band, they attack a caravan, and, and they win. 
despite three to one odds. They were outnumbered quite a bit, but they won anyway. And so Muhammad viewed this as Allah's affirmation of him, of him. Like Allah is affirming that Muhammad is going to lead this new movement for God. And so after he, after they beat this caravan, Muhammad took one fifth of the loot for himself and left four fifths for the rest of his men. But even that one fifth, it was a great share for one man to have. And the men become very angry. And simply, Muhammad all of a sudden had another revelation. And that affirmed that he should have the loot that Allah has given him. So it seems like he just can start begin starting having these thoughts or slash revelations and begin to get what he wants and do what he wants. And obviously that's going to, to uh, become very important when it comes to the establishment of the Quran. Which he had been, which he wrote. Um, it's around this time, 624 A.D., that uh, that Muhammad begins to pray towards Mecca. So before that, he would pray, I guess, any direction. But now he's praying uh, directly towards Mecca. 631 A.D. Um, he begins widespread attacks on his caravans. Uh, he's gained a lot of power by now. Um, just very, very strong. There's followers. There. He's, he basically has an army, and uh, he conquers all of Arabia. And this is what he promises, which would cause many people to fight for him. He promises eternal paradise for anyone who fights and dies in his wars. So Muhammad was not, don't think Muhammad was just some peaceful guy sitting in a cave writing down some revelations that he got from Gabriel. Muhammad, he's going around attacking, killing, pillaging, promising eternal paradise for people that die for him. He's going about causing war. So Muhammad is, is, is a violent man. And on top of everything else, he's married to a nine-year-old. So he's, uh, he's definitely not some saint. And this is the founder of Islam. 632 AD, Muhammad dies of natural causes, but challenges his followers to spread the faith. And um, and believe me, they do. They, they spread the faith. They spread the faith in geography. They spread the faith in numbers. They spread the faith in ideology. They spread the faith that Muhammad began. Just a couple other points uh, on Muhammad before we move on. Muhammad, he never claimed to be divine. So um, even though Muslims hold Muhammad to a high level of respect and you can't speak against Muhammad, uh, they, they don't worship Muhammad. They worship Allah. But Muhammad, uh, some people might believe that they worship Muhammad, but Muhammad never claimed to be divine. He insisted that Allah had called him to be a prophet for Allah. He always went back to that, that he was a prophet for Allah. Uh, Muslims do not worship Muhammad. Incredible growth rate after his death. So after he dies, there is just a massive spread of the religion, uh, mainly through defeat, uh, uh, war and conquering other peoples, through force, um, Islam spread and it remains a cohesive force for over 1300 years there's ebbs and flows with almost everything we talk about in history so you know there's high points in Muslim history and there's low points there's times when it's really flourishing and there's times when it's not but um, well over 1300 years I mean even till today uh, Islam is a very powerful force in our world uh, today Here's a picture of the great mosque in Mecca. You can just see how massive this is, this mosque is in Mecca. In the very center there, that's the central focal point of their worship. There's a stone there. 
Okay, the Great Mosque is located in Mecca. It's the largest in the world. It can hold 900,000 worshipers. So you can see there on the screen, I mean, just so many people there in the in the mosque listening to the the worship, whatever they're doing, the prayers, whatever they're doing. They can hold 900,000 worshipers. There's nine minarets at, at the Great Mosque in Mecca. The minarets, uh, a minaret is a tall, slender tower uh, with a balcony that is used to call for prayer. And so here, the, that's these right here. Um, the cursor on the screen is circling. That, so there, this is a minaret, and that's the balcony where someone would call for prayer. Now, in modern times, like today, they have loudspeakers. They have you know speaker system up there calling out the prayers but in the older older times or maybe a smaller mosque there would be this person that would go up there a muezzin that's that's how you pronounce that muezzin would stand on the balcony and call for prayer because they have to pray a certain number of times a day we'll get that when we get to the five pillars of islam but they have to pray certain times of the day and so someone will come up and call for prayer All right, class, that's about it for my voice for this PowerPoint. Um, so we're just going to uh, conclude here uh, for that. We looked at, we looked at uh, Muhammad and, uh, and the mosque there. So uh, next time we'll pick up on more of the beliefs of, of Islam. Okay, class, that's going to be it for the day. Um, next time we're going to be looking at uh, some more of the, the beliefs of Islam and uh, the different types of of Muslims, the different uh, sects that they belong to, and um, and we're gonna be looking at the five pillars of Islam, which is basically their their main beliefs. So um, we're gonna be uh, looking at that next time. Uh, other than that, that's gonna be it for today. Okay, take care.